on Next Level Pro Wrestling fans. This is your ring announcer, that guy, Trey Morgan, here. And we're here with another episode of Time to Talk with Trey Morgan. And this week, my guest here is Matthew Ennis. Matthew, thank you for being here on the show, sir. Thank you for having me, sir. It's a pleasure. Good. Uh, so let's talk about, like we do with every one of my guests here, on how we started watching wrestling and getting into the wrestling business. So what memories do you have as a little kid like I did um, – who were you watching and who did you first did you take to saying, man, wrestling is great? Man, uh, for me, I actually have more memories of me and my cousin uh, pretending we were WWE stars, okay. beating the crap out of each other on the trampoline yeah. every single day. Summer break comes, that's all we're doing is spending all day out there and then go inside, we're playing uh, Nintendo GameCube, like WWE Day Reckoning. So that's actually most of my childhood. Um, I didn't really get to watch it much as a kid because my parents just wouldn't let me have it on there. But when I, anytime I'd spend the night with him, him and his dad were big wrestling fans. Yeah. So I always got to watch it when I was over there. And I just remember, man, I just thought Stone Cold Steve Austin was just the most oh yeah, most badass dude ever. And I was just like, yo, like I really like this guy. He's just beating everybody up, beating his boss up. So that's kind of really just who made me fall in love with wrestling, man. Um, I didn't start watching it consistently um, until high school. Uh, me and my mom had a closer relationship at the time because unfortunately my dad passed away when I was a sophomore. And so we grew closer and obviously there was a little bit more freedom because I was more of an adult. And so like that's like the 2007, 2010 frames like John Cena, Edge, Randy Orton, all those guys were like the... I, I wouldn't even necessarily say they're prime per se because, like, they're still amazing today. But, like, that's most people's vivid memories is those storylines. So that's where I really started watching it. Um, went off to the military, fell out of it for a little bit, came back, went to college, and that's when I just started picking back up and I've watched it ever since. So uh, you just said that you started wrestling business and left and went into the military. Uh, what branch were you in? Uh, the Army National Guard. Okay. Well, thank you for your service. You know, here at Next Level for us, and we surely love to honor all the all the men and women that come through here that have been in the military. So, thank you for your service, there, sir. Thank you. Um, going on, so you get out of the military and you decide you want to come back to the wrestling business. Is that? Yeah. yeah uh, well, actually, fun fact: um, I'm actually still serving. Oh, okay. On year 15 right now, currently. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's. Not necessarily the easiest because sometimes when we have duty, it's on weekends where I have where I've been asked to be booked, and unfortunately, Uncle Sam takes priority over sure. pro wrestling. Uh, but it's been very, uh, I would say, fruitful in being able to grow as a leader in the military and kind of carry that into pro wrestling because I like to make sure that I'm not only carrying myself in a manner that's going to reflect well while I'm wrestling, but also like. You know, the first thing, if I do something stupid, somebody's be like, oh, he was in the military. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's going to be a re poor reflection on them as well. Sure. So going on and let's talk about how you got into the wrestling business. So you, <laughs> you, you started out as a kid wrestling with your cousins on the trampoline and you get to <laughs> wanting to train, wanting to find out. It's like, okay, now you're seeing it on TV, staying with your family there. And now you're wanting to start being a wrestler so yeah. how, how did that come about <laughs> so i love telling this story um i'm a christian i'm a believer i'm a firm believer that um you know if you ask god to guide your path he'll open the doors for you Absolutely. Um, where he wants them open um so it was actually funny this was like 2013 2014 um i was in college in south carolina at the time north greenville university go crusaders um and i was home on summer break and my mom always knew I wanted to be a wrestler. Um, and finally I was just like, man, like, let me figure out how to do this. You know, so I actually just Googled how to become a professional wrestler. And <laughs> it was funny because I vaguely remember like there were some like, like sites that were just complete BS on like the information. I remember one that was like, <laughs> Vince McMahon reads these messages all the time. Tell us your your routine moves and one finisher and he'll get back to you. And I was like, no way if it's going to call me, you know? <laughs> uh, but then I found one. It was like, I think it was like a, if Reddit was even a thing, a, some message bulletin board, board yeah, message, message board, board yeah. that was just like, oh, like, hey, if you, um, 
I've never done it before, find an independent school near you or whatever. So I'd actually Googled professional wrestling schools in North Carolina and just like a couple of pages I'd found at the time, I clicked on each one and I genuinely tried to call all of them to get more information and like they either had bad numbers or some of them weren't even in existence anymore. So I was just like, all right, I guess there's nothing in North Carolina. So, uh, and again, not being able to watch it growing up, at that time, I didn't realize how rich in wrestling history pro wrestling was. So I learned that as I got through the business. But um, I was sitting there, and I think I had looked up, I knew I'd looked up OVW. I had emailed uh, Nick Din Dinsmore okay. about it. And I looked up, um, there was another school, I don't remember, but I think maybe it was Booker T's. I, either way, I looked up two big name schools, and in my head I was like, cool, I'll just save up money, get through college, and then I'm just going to go. Because like, I want to make this happen, and that's the only way I'm going to do it, is if I just go after it. Um, and so after that, I was kind of bummed, because I was like, man, I wish there was something around here. And honestly, I just that day I said a prayer, and I said, hey, God, like if this is something you want me to do, open the door. And the gym that I was going to at the time, Fit for Life, the district manager, um, I was always bugging him all the time to have a job there because I always wanted to work in a gym. And he would never let me work there because I was only home for summer and winter breaks. And he's like, I'm not going to hire you for one or two months. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and I talked about my interest in pro wrestling. He knew I was a big fan. Well, literally that same day, I'm taking a nap and he calls me and wakes me up. And he's like, you need to get to the gym right now. And so I get to the gym, and he had told me about one of his trainers wrestled, but I never, ever saw that guy. Like, I was convinced this wasn't even a real person because yeah. I'd just never seen him at the gym. And so he's like, the trainer I was telling you about, he's here right now. You need to get here. So didn't hesitate. Uh, went and got to meet him. He was sitting down at the time. He told me about Ring Wars Carolina out in Fayetteville, and so that's where I started with Eddie and, Eddie and Hangtown. Okay. So moving on to hang time. So you've – You've known him quite a while, unfortunately. I guess, yeah. So, <laughs> no, I love so we we've had him here on the show before, and we had a lot of people talk about him. Let's uh, hear a story, maybe that you have. Oh man, man, there's so many to choose from. Oh, this one's for you. So, I future the generations that have come into like next level and everything. I always joke with them like, "Hey, y'all got the soft version." of hang time because I kid you not my first ever training session he was leading it that day because Eddie had to work and no one smartened me up that you were supposed to shake everybody's hand when you come in and say hello you know okay. um, that was like a foreign concept to me at the time not one person thought he didn't even tell me I spoke to both of them neither of them told me so I'm like okay cool I got my wrestling shoes I got my knee pads I got my elbow pads. I'm ready to go. And so my first ever practice, I go in, get all my gear on. I jump in the ring because I'm just that excited. I'm like, all right, let's get this. You know, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to do this. And he was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't know what to say. I'm like, I, I'm ready to practice. And so he was like, get in the corner and take your shirt off. And so at the time, I'm like, I don't know what's coming. You already know. You already know. Oh. You already know. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Like you're rubbing your chest, you already know, right? Shit. And so, oh. um, <laughs> so I, in my head, I'm like, I don't know what's coming. So I'm like, okay, maybe it's like a, a rule you have to like pretend you're in a match and always have your shirt off. I don't know. And so I get in the corner, like I, this happened to be the day that there was like 10, 12 people at training. And so everybody got to take turns. Not even just one. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody got to give me the right they got to give me the left and the overhand. Oh, oh you got three. And I'm just being told the whole time, breathe, breathe, breathe. And he asked me like three or four times, he's like, do you want a break? And in my head, I'm like, I don't know if this is some kind of test, but like, I feel like if I stop early, it's going to be worse. So I was like, I'm crying. Like tears are coming out. I'm holding it all inside, trying not to just break down. Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm good. I can do it. I'm good. This one, bow. I'm good. I'm good. Bow. And so we get through. Tony then comes and chops me three times. And anybody that knows hang times, chops, you don't want to take those because they hurt and they're loud. And they just, it's like an earthquake yeah. is smacking your chest. You know what I mean? Yeah. So 
that after that finished, I was like, okay, maybe this is all done. Nope, there's no, more. The but wait, there's more. So Tony then tells me to sit on in the middle of the ring, lean forward, hunch over a little bit, and grab my thighs. I have no idea what's coming. And so next thing I know, Tony just kicks the ever living mess out of my back. I'm like, oh, what was that? You know what I mean? So then everybody got to go one round and kick me in the back with the left, kick me in the back with the right. <laughs> That's so funny. And look, hang time. Hang time is a great dude. This is not to have any negativity. This is like just my favorite story because like I know hang time and hang time's character enough that hang time truly cared. And he saw a lot in me. Yeah. And I'm really glad that he did that because who knows, maybe I could have not had that reality check. And we can all also argue too, that that's a very old school way of doing things. Like a lot of times nowadays, you probably won't see that anymore. Right. Um, in a way it's kind of for the better. You know what I mean? In some ways, maybe there are some people that come into the wrestling business that need that. That need the discipline. You, you know, know, sometimes it might need a little smack to get yeah, yourself no, right in line. Like, I've know? needed that in the military. I, I needed you know that I mean? when I was growing up. A hundred percent. So, you know, I think, a little smack every now and then is all right. Yeah, I think it's context dependent, right? Um, and, but then after that, the best part of it was he was like, now what are you going to do every time you come to practice? And I was like, I'm going to shake everybody's hand and say hello. And he's like, and before you leave, shake everybody's hand and say goodbye. Never had an issue again. And um, that's honestly the toughest that he's ever been on me. Um, cause just from then there, I just was like, okay, like this is real. Like these guys aren't playing. Like I gotta be on my P's and Q's at all times. And so like after that, it was just put your head down, listen, work as hard as you can. And so far, I think everything's paying off. I'd like to say it is. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say you're, you're still, still in the business after all this time. So yeah. obviously it is paying off there. So Let's move it on. You, now you've got a little bit of experience in the wrestling business. You know, so you started out, like you said, in in Ring Wars there. And so let's talk about your time there. You've been in the ring with a bunch of people there. So let's talk about that. Yeah, um, man, I think it was a really amazing place to really learn my fundamentals. Um, him and Eddie always really hammered that. And because their big focus was, if you can't master this, then why are you even worried about a lot of the more advanced stuff? And the more I've gone to different places in professional wrestling, that lesson tends to prove itself more and more, especially when you go to other schools. So I'm very, very grateful that they hammer the basics as much as they do. Um, and just like some of the inside stuff they taught me, I mean, I can't think of anything specific right now. Obviously conversation could oh, dictate sure. that. Yeah. Um, but like that was just, I think a really great place that I got started and if I wasn't there, we can argue all day what could happen. I just know sure. it got me my next step. Um, do you want me to just continue? Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, please. Um, so yeah, 2017, 2018, 2018, um, they had brought in Joey Mercury for a, um, to do a seminar with us and was amazing. If you've ever worked with Joey before, technical mastermind ring psychology like just some of the ways he explains stuff it's just like right you know what i mean um and somebody at the end of the seminar had asked joey if we could send him our matches uh to watch and so um i sent him mine or i didn't send him mine sorry let me backtrack <laughs> his comment was you can pay me and i'll watch it he's like people already send me matches all the time i don't have time to watch all that which that's fair sure. um and so I ended up emailing him because he gave us an email to reach out to. And I was like, hey, I'd love to pay you for coaching, you know, just so you can give me feedback on uh, what to do. So I sent him, I sent him a match. And um, sorry, ADHD moment. My brain stopped. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I sent him a match. And we jumped on a call together. And at the time, you know, I, what I'm going to say is not to, like, brag on me it's just like what he said at the time sure. could he have been blowing smoke could he have been serious either way i just took it as a compliment he asked me how old are you and i said 25 and he's like you're way better at 25 than you have the right to be and i was like okay x wwe guy telling me that i'm not mad you know what i mean so he gave me some stuff to work on and told me he's like cool i want you to send me another match let's do another coaching call 
So I'm like, cool. And I think it was maybe a month or so later. I remember I was actually on a three-week National Guard duty when I sent it to him. And we jumped on another call, and he kind of said it in like a surprise way. He's like, how many matches have you had since the last time I talked to you? And at the time, I wasn't even really that established. I was really just wrestling ring war shows. Yeah. Uh, I think I had had like three or four more. And he was like, you're way better than you were last time. And I just almost like, I just did what you told me. <laughs> just kept coming to training. And that ended up leading into Joey bringing me in to the camera. This is a lot of ugly you yeah, got to yeah, filter. Yeah, Hello, Next Level Pro Wrestling fans. This is your ring announcer, that guy, Trey Morgan, here, and we're here with another episode of Time to Talk with Trey Morgan. And this week, my guest here is Matthew Ennis. Matthew, thank you for being here on the show, sir. Thank you for having me, sir. It's a pleasure. Good. Uh, so let's talk about, like we do with every one of my guests here, on how we started watching wrestling and getting into the wrestling business. So what memories do you have as a little kid like I did um, – who were you watching, and who did you first did you take to saying, man, wrestling is great? Man, uh, for me, I actually have more memories of me and my cousin uh, pretending we were WWE stars, okay. beating the crap out of each other on the trampoline yeah. every single day. Summer break comes, that's all we're doing is spending all day out there, and then go inside, we're playing uh, Nintendo GameCube, like WWE Day Reckoning. So that's actually most of my childhood. Um I didn't really get to watch it much as a kid because my parents just wouldn't let me have it on there. But when I, anytime I'd spend the night with him, him and his dad were big wrestling fans. Yeah. So I always got to watch it when I was over there. And I just remember, man, I just thought Stone Cold Steve Austin was just the most oh yeah, most badass dude ever. And I was just like, yo, like I really like this guy. He's just beating everybody up, beating his boss up. So that's kind of really just who made me fall in love with wrestling, man. Um, I didn't start watching it consistently um, until high school. Uh, me and my mom had a closer relationship at the time because unfortunately my dad passed away when I was a sophomore. And so we grew closer and obviously there was a little bit more freedom because I was more of an adult. And so like that's like the 2007, 2010 frames like John Cena, Edge, Randy Orton, all those guys were like the... I, I wouldn't even necessarily say they're prime per se because, like, they're still amazing today. But, like, that's most people's vivid memories is those storylines. So that's where I really started watching it. Um, went off to the military, fell out of it for a little bit, came back, went to college, and that's when I just started picking back up and I've watched it ever since. So uh, you just said that you started wrestling business and left and went into the military. Uh, what branch were you in? Uh, the Army National Guard. Okay. Well, thank you for your service. You know, here at Next Level for us, so we surely love to honor all the all the men and women that come through here that have been in the military. So thank you for your service, there, sir. Thank you. Um, going on, so you get out of the military and you decide you want to come back to the wrestling business. Is yeah. that? Yeah. Uh, well, actually, fun fact: um, I'm actually still serving. Oh, okay. On year 15 right now, currently. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's. Not necessarily the easiest because sometimes when we have duty, it's on weekends where I have where I've been asked to be booked, and unfortunately Uncle Sam takes priority over sure. pro wrestling. Uh, but it's been very, uh, I would say, fruitful in being able to grow as a leader in the military and kind of carry that into pro wrestling because I like to make sure that I'm not only carrying myself in a manner that's going to reflect well while I'm wrestling, but also like. You know, the first thing, if I do something stupid, somebody's be like, oh, he was in the military. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's going to be a re poor reflection on them as well. Sure. So going on, and let's talk about how you got into the wrestling business. So you, <laughs> you, you started out as a kid wrestling with your cousins on the trampoline, and you get to <laughs> wanting to train, wanting to find out. It's like, okay, now you're seeing it on TV, staying with your family there, and now you're wanting to 
start being a wrestler. So yeah. how, how did that come about? <laughs> so I love telling this story. Um, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. I'm a firm believer that, um, you know, if you ask God to guide your path, he'll open the doors for you Absolutely. Um, where he wants them open. Um, so it was actually funny. This was like 2013, 2014. Um, I was in college in South Carolina at the time, North Greenville University, go Crusaders. Um, and I was home on summer break and my mom always knew I wanted to be a wrestler. Um, and finally I was just like, man, like, let me figure out how to do this. You know? So I actually just Googled how to become a professional wrestler. And <laughs> it was funny cause I vaguely remember like there were some like, like sites that were just complete BS on like the information. I remember one that was like <laughs> Vince McMahon reads these messages all the time. Tell us your, your routine moves and one finisher and he'll get back to you. And I was like, no way Vince McMahon is going to call me, you know? <laughs> uh, but then I found one, it was like, I think it was like a, if Reddit was even a thing as some bulletin board, board. Yeah. Message, message board. board that was just like, Oh, like, Hey, if you, um, have never done it before, find an independent school near you or whatever. So I'd actually Googled professional wrestling schools in North Carolina and just like a couple of pages I'd found at the time, I clicked on each one and I genuinely tried to call all of them to get more information. And like they either had bad numbers or some of them weren't even in existence anymore. So I was just like, all right, I guess there's nothing in North Carolina. So, uh, and again, not being able to watch it growing up at that time, I didn't realize how rich in wrestling history pro wrestling was. So I learned that as I got through the business, but, um, I was sitting there and I think I had looked up, I knew I'd looked up OVW. I had emailed uh, Nick Din Dinsmore okay. about it. And I looked up, um, there was another school, I don't remember, but I think maybe it was Booker T's. I, either way, I looked up two big name schools. And in my head, I was like, cool, I'll just save up money, get through college, and then I'm just going to go. Because like, I want to make this happen, and that's the only way I'm going to do it, is if I just go after it. Um, and so after that, I was kind of bummed, because I was like, man, I wish there was something around here. And honestly, I just, that day I said a prayer and I say, Hey God, like if this is something you want me to do, open the door. And the gym that I was going to at the time, Fit for Life, the district manager, um, I was always bugging him all the time to have a job there because I always wanted to work in a gym. And he would never let me work there because I was only home for summer and winter breaks. And he's like, I'm not going to hire you for one or two months. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and I talked about my interest in pro wrestling. He knew I was a big fan. Well, literally that same day, I'm taking a nap and he calls me and wakes me up and he's like, you need to get to the gym right now. And so I get to the gym and he had told me about one of his trainers wrestled, but I never, ever saw that guy. Like I was convinced this wasn't even a real person. I just, I was like, yo, I just, I'm so excited right now. Like I feel so good. Everything felt good. I feel confident about everything. And then she told me, she's like, gorilla had so many people in there cheering for you and clapping for you. She's like, celebrate this. She's like, cause this should be the feeling you hold on to forever. And like, I'll never forget that just to know that everybody was behind my back for that. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Then unfortunately I got told it was going to air before the uh, year ended. It never aired. I still don't know where the tape is. Really? I can't even go back and watch it. I'm just like, oh, ah. man. <laughs> the quest yeah, to get that, back on bummer. TV continues. What a bummer. <laughs> like, you, you have it on tape, but just never got shown to the world. Yeah. And there's, there's like, no hard feelings. Like, who knows? Like, you never really know, like, why it happens. You never know because, you know, I've seen stuff on the internet saying they might get a streaming service. Yeah. And might be able to put it on there. Yeah, you know, exactly. I've never before seen matches. Or something Maybe it's still like in that. the vault so, somewhere. I just got to go crack the safe. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so let's, let's move on a little bit. And now, so doing all that in North Carolina, you moved up to Maryland to, yep. to do them. And now you're based out of Florida, if, yeah. if I'm correct. Yes, sir. Um, so, yeah. So uh, when I came back from Ring of Honor, so March of 2021, I hit up the gym that I used to work for. I was like, hey, you know, opportunity shut down out here. Can I come work for you guys again? You know, because I was just so used to it. I was doing really well. Came back. Um, I was the fitness manager before at the location before I moved. So they just were like, hey, let's put you in the assistant fitness manager position. 
let you get your feet wet again, and we're pretty sure you can earn that promotion back. Got it within six months, and then they actually moved me closer to my house uh, in Dunn um, at our McGee's Crossroads location. So I was going at the time. Um, now Eddie and Tony both have their own schools at this point. So I was actually kind of bouncing back and forth because I'm just like, I just want to keep putting in reps. I just want to keep getting the work in, and I really don't care how many days I have to do it because I just, I just want to get better. You know, I don't ever want to be the guy that somebody can say, like, he doesn't put in the time. And I, because I just, I want to do this and I love doing yes. this, you know. Um, and then it just got to the point where I kind of just, like, felt stuck. Like, I was still wrestling shows. Um, I was getting feedback, you know, being told, hey, these things are much better. Keep working on this. Um, but, yeah, I just, uh, I think I had switched from my, Flex Simmons, greatest physique and pro wrestling gimmick now was going full army mode. Um, and I was Sergeant Codename Flex. So it was kind of like a almost satirical army character. So yeah. it had a little bit of like, ah, ha, ha, that's funny um, to it. And it was working everywhere. I was having a lot of fun with it. Um, but, you know, one of my, my actual coach now, Kakoa, who's a coach for the House of Champions, um, he made a valid point. He's like, do they love you or do they love the patriotism? And so I kind of had to take a step back. I was like, mm, there's probably something to that. But like, I'm emotionally attached to the gimmick. So like, I'm kind of fighting him a little bit on it. I want to keep doing it. And so then I ended up taking a Gabe Sapolsky seminar tryout. Yeah. Um, and Gabe's feedback was the ex almost the exact same. He's like, I see what you're going for, but it's too gimmicky. Like, you got to find a way to do this a different way. And so then that's when I was like, okay, I got to figure out something. And then at the time, um, I finally just had a talk with each of them when I was at training. And I was just like, hey, like, um, I just feel like I'm stuck. You know, like, I, I feel like I'm spending more time helping train up new people than I am wrestling people better than me. Because that's the only way you're going to get better in wrestling. You've right. got to be around people at higher levels. Right. And lo and behold, um, I was venting that to Kakoa, and he said, keep an eye on social media, follow this page, there's a wrestling school opening in Florida, just keep your eyes on it. And then lo and behold, they announced he was the head trainer. And so he's like, get down here. And so I was like, bet. So then um, September 2023, 13th to be exact, I packed my car up. Um, headed down to Florida, already had a job lined up as a personal trainer, and I originally stayed with Kakoa um, in the beginning until I was able to get my own place. Um, but yeah, so now I'm at the House of Champions. I've been there. This year will be, or this month was actually a full year um, that I've been there, and just like, man, it's been night and day. Um, to kind of put it into a little bit of perspective, the House of Champions. Um, we like to just say it's changing the game. Um, they have two WWE size rings that we get to train in. So like, you know, the train how rings, you want to be. Yeah. Um, we have marketing classes, social media classes, like how deep we go, not only into the training there, we also go into the details outside of the ring because wow. we can all agree like your brand and, you know, people's eyes on you is everything in this. And just like, Bobby Fish is one of our coaches now as well. You know, and so now we got Kakoa, Jamie Stanley, and Bobby Fish, all three guys that have done stuff at multiple places in this industry, yeah. pouring into us as students. So it's just like I tell people all the time, like moving to Florida and training there has been like a game changer for my career. I even got to do like a couple extra talent spots, one of them uh, being for WrestleMania this year. Oh, wow. So just like the connections that I've made – how much more my own work has improved is because of the House of Champions, and I wouldn't be there without them today. So would, would you say it's not a bad thing to broaden your horizons and, and do something that's uncomfortable to you? No. You, know, you, you might not know somebody. Like you, you said you didn't know anybody in Florida except for him. No. So And you packed your stuff and went. So, yeah. so there's nothing wrong with taking a chance on yourself. You no, know, absolutely not. Only thing they can do is say no and then turn around and come back. <laughs> but we don't want to think about that. It's, you're going to go out there and you're, we're going to succeed. Yeah. yeah. And the biggest thing, man, is like 
we don't have all the time in the world for me to go through every detail of all these stories. Right. But like, if I'm being a hundred percent completely honest, both times I didn't really plan anything out. I lined up a job both times. I made sure I at least had somewhere to sleep, but I just left, you know, like I was single man, no kids, you know, cause obviously that stuff sure. makes things a lot harder. Absolutely. Um, but that's just what I tell people all the time is like, you can't just stay in one area. Like you've got to get out. You've got to take the risk because you're only going to grow again. If you're around people better than you. Um, and if you, I tell people all the time too, like if you're scared about it, like both of those times, like I was struggling, but there was uh, plenty of months where I didn't know if I was going to be able to pay rent. There were a couple months I didn't pay rent, but I got a call back up. Yeah. You know, it's just, just, it really, taking a big leap like that and landing with no safety net, it really just teaches you a lot about who you are. And as somebody that's moved and started over two times, um, I've lost both of my parents and just like, I've kind of really just reinforced to myself at this point, like I will get nervous and anxious about stuff, but I'm really confident that I can figure it out. So I tell people all the time, take the risk. So, You've moved to Florida, and now we'll we'll move into a little bit more of the present day. We're talking about today. You yeah, finally made full circle, and you're back here at Next Level Pro Wrestling tonight. You're taking on none other than the Next Level Pro Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, Jack Tatum. Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper Tatum. He'll be here in our main event tonight. Yeah. Um, it's not going to be an easy challenge. Um, I've been watching a lot of Jack stuff. Um don't necessarily agree with maybe how he's won some of his matches, the antics and the tactics that I've watched. But at the end of the day, he's still a champion. And when you can continue to retain the championship defense after defense, that puts a lot of credibility into you. And so it's not really something you can look over, even if you don't necessarily agree with it. So Jack's going to be a really tough matchup tonight, but I'm in my hometown and my family's going to be here. My sister, aunts, uncles, family, friends, people that have lived there all my life have already told me they're going to be here tonight. And there's just something about that home field advantage. You know, it's like it unlocks something a lot deeper inside of you that you just bring out and you just unleash. And I'm ready to unleash that. So we're going to go ahead and get closer to the end of the podcast here because okay. we're getting close to showtime. It's oh, what time we got right now? It's uh, six thirty-two. Six thirty. <laughs> so we're telling you, forty-five minutes as we're talking right now because we are in location wow. here in Dunn, North Carolina, right here tonight at the Dunn Powell Fitness Center. So forty-five minutes is the bell time. You want to make sure that you come out here this evening. We got the main event right here: Jack Tatum versus Matthew Ennis for the Next Level Pro Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here, Matthew. Thank you for being thank here you, on the show. It was a pleasure meeting you, sir. 100%. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching here. Make sure you follow us at nextlevelprowrestling.com. Follow us on all of our social media. Check us out on Facebook at Next Level Pro Wrestling. Check us out on our YouTube page at NLPW and 26 Wrestling Academy. Also, make sure that you check out and subscribe and like to the podcast. Time to talk with Trey Morgan. This is episode number 11. We do have more that's going to come out as well. So thank you very much for being here, ladies and gentlemen. We are here at Dunn Powell Fitness Center. We'll see you on our next show.